um, Armen Arujian uh, from Los Angeles, California. I actually grew up in Soviet Union. Um, those of you in China or those of you Chinese would appreciate what that meant. I, um, I, I was in Soviet Union until the age of 15, so I grew up hating the United States with passion. Um, but then my parents decided to bring me to the United States. Um, I, uh, I was doing quite well in school that I was in back in Soviet Armenia, and that's where I was born and grew up. And then I was brought to Los Angeles at the age of 15, and I went to Hollywood High School. My first experience of Hollywood High School, uh, 1989, December 14, and they took me for registration. The, the doors open up, and African-American women and Mexican women gang war. And I'm like, if this is what women do to one another, I hate to see what men can. But that's how I started my experience um, in, in America after, four, after two weeks in the United States. Initially, I did well. I spoke no English. I'm still working on that, so if I make mistakes, bear with me. I spoke no English, so it was very difficult. I don't know if uh, you've all been 15, 16 years old. This is when you're becoming an adult and you think you figure things out until they pull you away from whatever you think you know and they bring you to another country that you always taught to hate. And they put you with people that don't speak your language, don't really understand your culture, you don't understand any of this. So it became very difficult. Um, nine months into the... Uh, into the state in the United States, I found my first job. I worked at Sears, uh, garden shop, flowering plants, and just one thing about not speaking English. I remember a customer calls me and says, do you have a gazebo? I mean, who knows? How many of you don't know what a gazebo is? All right, thank God, right? So I thought that was, so they, you know, it's like, do you have a gazebo? And I started sweating, my boss is next to me. I say, hold on for a second. So I start opening the drawers, looking for a gazebo, went out looking at cactus. I'm like, maybe it's a cactus named gazebo. Can't find it. Come back. Please give me one more moment. Looking at plants, at pots, everything you can find. Then security guard of Sears passes by and I say, look, what's a gazebo? He says, it's a big umbrella with chairs. And it would have taken the entire store to have a gazebo in. So I had to come back and say, no, I don't have it. But it was quite embarrassing. And, uh, but, you know, when you're learning languages, you, I suppose you go through episodes of that nature. And then I, I decided to get promoted. So I found a, I found a job at another place uh, that paid more than the minimum wage because my family was actually very poor. When we left Soviet Union, they gave us three hours to get out of the country and um, $90 per person. So we came to the United States with $360 family of four, whatever you can grab in three hours. Now I live in LA, if someone says, meet me in downtown LA in three hours, I say, that is not possible, I can't. But we changed the country in three hours. So grew up um, very poor came and you know the money wasn't there to be uh, to be found outside of just getting jobs because my parents did not speak any English and uh, their education is very low my dad has fifth grade education has been a chauffeur entire life my mom was a baker it was very difficult to mimic those jobs in the United States so I, we had to work both my brother and I I found a job where I was actually cleaning 5,000 square foot CNR clothiers men's retail I would vacuum was an only space like this on Sunset Boulevard. And, you know, going to Hollywood High School, all the people will take Sunset Boulevard to go to school and come back. I had to face people looking at me from my high school. And, kind of, you know, it's, it's not a fun job when you're vacuuming and people are passing by and looking at you, pointing, and start giggling. But that was my life until I got into entrepreneurial affairs. But what the point I want to make here, I started working at uh, Glendale Galleria, which is one of the largest uh, shopping centers, uh, I want to say, in the United States. Um, I would have a lot of customers on a daily basis, we were at a corner store, come and ask for information from us. What's on sale in another store where we can find this? So after, after working there for about six, seven months, I figured there's a business opportunity. When people come and ask you for stuff and they can't find, 
I had a colleague with me, Harry Heimowitz, who was 18 years senior. I was 19, he was 37, and he was a computer whiz. So he was, you know, he was a coder. He would sell um, data points to the stores and whatnot outside of working in retail with me. Him and I, we decided, all right, so if there is a customer base, let us, why don't we start a business? So we decided what we would call, this is in 1993, guys. This is pre-Amazon, pre-Google, really. We decided to start something called 1-800 shopping and have an also a web, um, web page that would be associated with that. We did the financial analysis. I had, I had done some entrepreneurial engagements that I was successful, so I had put all of my life savings into this at the age of 19. We came to a point where the business looked very incredible. You know, I was in the ninth cloud. I quit school. I said, you know, what I'm going to do with school, you know, I have a great opportunity, we're going to be billionaires. And a week before we were going to see our first major funder, Harry Heimowitz was diagnosed with AIDS. Um, you know, this is, again, 1993, you don't have if you don't have the means of Magic Johnson, you really don't have an opportunity. You don't have a chance. He was not HIV positive. He had AIDS at the time that he learned about this. So he was given only a few months to live. When you're given a few months of, to live, nothing matters. What billions of dollars, what, what businesses, what affairs, none of that is important. When you're 19 year old, New to the country, I've been to the country for about three years now. When you're new to the country, you think you've figured everything out. Everything has been sorted, and whatever your dream was, it's going to come to reality a week later. And then your best friend is kind of losing his life. Your dreams are going down. It's a crushing reality that no one should face in life. Harry passed away. He, uh, he died. Uh, may God rest his soul. My dream went with it. I was dead myself. Terrible experience, but taught me a lot about people. Taught me a lot also the importance of having teams. And I just want to make a point here that, you know, I don't want to want just one, yes, yes. Well, you're asking us to make a point, so let's make a point here, right? And the point was, if I was better pre prepared at that time, knowing that if your half, if something happens to your half next day, what happens to you? When he was gone, everything was gone. I didn't know anyone. I didn't have a networking capacity. I didn't have any more funds left. I didn't have the educational capacity. But it, taught me a good lesson in the future. When you're building something, you need to build a strong team around you. So there would be not redundancies, but there would be a collaborative environment that if, if there is going to be a fall at some point, you're not wiped out. Because I was wiped out for four years, and I wouldn't want to wish anything of that nature about anyone. Thank you.